Welcome to 8.4. We're going to now take slope and do slope and intercepts. We're going to find out what that is in the coordinate plane, right? We did slope in the first quadrant. We did slope as a ramp. Now we're going to do it in the coordinate plane. First, let's remind ourselves how to do slope, right? So you find your good intersections. You don't have to copy this one. Just Make sure you can find the slope. You find your good intersections. They have to, right? They have to be where the line perfectly hits. An intersection is like a street intersection. You go down. When you get even with another intersection, you go across. How much it goes up is called the rise. And the rise here is one. How much it runs to the right, and we always run to the right, is count the boxes, is four. So the slope of this one is one fourth. Now, the good intersections of this one are here, and you want more than just two. You only need two, but you need three or four because you want to make sure you can see that, that all the intersections are equidistant. They're in a pattern because if you mess up the pattern, then you might get the wrong slope. All right, so I'm going to do it right here. We're going to go down until we get even with another one. And notice the ramp now is facing the other way, and that's because although the run is always a positive number when you're going down the rise becomes negative and so the slope of that one is negative two-thirds now you put the negative two up top with the rise or you can put it out in front every textbook will put it out in front so it's negative two-thirds and it's because the rise is negative two there please that's very important now you're going to have arrows on both ends today all right but you only look at the arrow on the right okay this arrow is pointing down that arrow is pointing up these arrows that you'll see over here are because it's a line that goes on forever in both directions still just look at the arrow on the right it will tell you whether it's going up or down okay so let's look at our first one we have a line and it's in the coordinate plane so we're going to find the slope of line a b you find a good intersection, you go straight down, and yes, you should draw a little sketch of this. So here, and that point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, and the other point is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5, negative 2, and there's also one at 0, 0. And, oops, and you should draw better than Mr. Ben. So there, there's the sketch. How long did that take us? Not long. And you go straight down and then straight over to the next intersection, right? So straight down and straight over. The rise is two. The run is one, two, three, four, five. And so the slope is the rise over the run, two fifths. Now, usually when I do this in class, I usually get some people because they see the A and the B, they do this. They go down and they go over to A, which let's see what happens when you do that well you get a rise of four and a run of you count this it's ten you get four tenths right but four tenths can never be the answer to any fraction because you always have to simplify when you miss an intersection you will have to simplify your fraction that's why you want to make sure you've got the pattern of the intersections right and right you, that's how you also tell whether these things that look like they're could be possibly be a good intersection are or aren't because the good intersections make a pattern an equidistant pattern all right that's what we're doing today all right so this is just notes showing you uh that you don't pick where it's red there and you do pick here where it's blue so let's look along here i think i see one there that zero zero is given to you all right there's one there there's one there so then I look at the pattern I have. So it must continue over here, right? So we're going to find the slope in three different locations, right? So when you make your little sketch, right, you have 0, 0, you have 3, 1, you have 6, 2, you're going to, have, you're going to make it longer than that, and so on. And then you're going to come over here and go negative 3, negative 1, and so on, and draw your line like that. Okay, so now we could do it there we could do it there we could do it here it doesn't matter in all cases you have a rise of one a run of three this is a slope of one third 
Okay, now, this is what a negative slope looks like. Look at the right arrow. It's pointing down. Again, you can do the slope anywhere along here. So the run here, we're always going this, we're always reading these left to right. So this is going down left to right. The run here is two. The rise is going down, right? Because it's not rising, right? Think about the first quadrant. If we're in the first quadrant, that's going down. So the rise is negative three and the slope is negative three halves. Oops. Let me get that out of the way. So this one was slope equals negative three halves. Same thing here. There's also a good intersection right there and there. Notice I didn't draw my line all that well, but I, whoops, I didn't, I did, oh, I messed up. I, no, it's not there, it's there, right? Because I saw this was at five, so then this can't be, nine can't be right. It must be a 10, right? It goes zero, five, 10, negative five, negative 10 there. Okay, so now, this one is also going down. We can also, right, do the slope anywhere along there. So the run is positive five. The run is always a positive number. The rise is negative one. And so the slope is negative one fifth. Okay, so we have three lines there. Two of them are horizontal. One is not. So make sure you, I want you to first find the slope of the horizontal lines. The horizontal lines are the ones that are perfectly flat. So notice line GH here. Let's, I'll call it line. So GH, and you put a picture of a line on top of it. That's how you write the line GH. Now, this is at four, but that doesn't matter. It's at four here, and it's at four the whole time. So the rise is zero. It doesn't matter where it is, all right? The run also doesn't matter. I mean, it goes from negative 10 to positive 10, but on the graph, it actually goes forever in both directions. So you could put 20 down here, you could put anything. Slope of all horizontal lines is zero. So what's the other horizontal line? The other horizontal line is JK. And again, it doesn't matter that it's going through negative seven. It's got a rise of zero. It doesn't matter what number you put down there. It has a slope of zero. Now let's look at LM. LM is not horizontal, okay? It starts there, goes all the way across, and there's the rise. The rise is one. From negative 10 to positive 10 is 20. And that has a slope of 1 20th. That's the lowest non-zero slope, slope above zero that I can do, right? That's as flat as I can make them that's not zero because the grid only goes from negative 10 to positive 10. All right, so those are horizontal lines have a slope of zero. You have to know that. Your floor is horizontal. Vertical lines do not have a slope. Right? You don't say that it's zero. You say it doesn't have one. The math way of saying it doesn't have one is undefined. So which one is vertical? The one that's vertical is PQ, okay? And why it is, even though it starts at negative five, it never goes anywhere. It never runs, so the run is zero doesn't matter what you put up there, this is not equal to zero. Not just whenever you have zero down here, you never were doing fractions, like you never added three over zero plus two over zero ever when you were learning how to add fractions. Why? Because there is no definition, there's no answer, you can't answer that. Okay, so all vertical lines are, have a slope that's undefined. Your walls do not have a slope. They are vertical, hopefully, and they are, the slope is undefined. RQ here is not vertical. It's not straight up and down. It's, right, it, the run here is one. It goes over one, and then it goes from negative 10 to positive 20. This is a slope of 20. Slope of 20 is almost vertical. 20 is a huge slope, right? Most slopes are fractions. And so there you go. All right, so now that slope, we're gonna learn a second thing, and your homework has three things in each question. It has the slope and then it has the intercepts. The intercepts are where our line crosses each axis. So let's start with the x-intercept. The x-intercept here, find that. Where does that blue that I just outlined in blue cross the x-axis? So here's the x-axis. Where do they cross? They cross right there. Now an intercept is a 
coin, an ordered pair. So you don't say five, you say five zero, for that is the X. And you can't abbreviate that X because X is X coordinate. So it's X, you're gonna write it out, sorry. X intercept is five zero. All right, now the Y intercept is where our line crosses the Y axis. So where do they cross? Well, it crosses the Y axis right there. And the Y intercept will always start with a zero. The X intercept will always end in a zero. Where our line crosses the Y intercept is the, that. Now I didn't ask that, but you would then on the homework, you'll find those two things. And then you will also say the slope, the slope of this one is what two fifths. You'll say slope equals two fifths. That's what your homework looks like. Three things labeled and no abbreviating Y intercept Y because Y is this Y coordinate. Okay. Know your vocabulary. Let's do this again. All right. So let's start with the X intercept, right? Our line crosses the X axis right there at six zero. That is the X intercept. And then it crosses the Y axis right there at zero four. So you at home are making a little sketch of this and you're gonna show one, two, three, four, five, six, zero. And you're gonna do what I wrote, X intercept. Then you're gonna go to zero, one, two, three, four. And you're gonna go Y intercept is zero, four and then you're gonna draw a line through it. And there you go. And that's, we're labeling that the y-intercept. And in your homework, you'll also find the slope. This one is negative two thirds. Okay, Let's see if we can do all that. Let's practice. Okay, you don't have to sketch these. You can just look at the screen and do this and write down the answers. But there's an intersection, there's an intersection, there's an intersection, there's an intersection. We're gonna need some of these intersections. So let's start with the x-intercept. So this one, the x-intercept, negative four, zero, right? X-intercepts will be a number and then end in zero because they're always along the x-axis and all the points on there end in a zero. Then we'll go to the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis and that is always gonna start with zero, zero, two in this case. And that is my y-intercept. And then you find the slope anywhere you want. The rise is one, the run is two, and you write the slope equals one half. That's what your homework looks like. Okay, in fact, and speaking of that, let's, instead of doing all those, show, you know, show that's the x-intercept, show that's the y-intercept. Okay, better, better way to show it. All right, so x-intercept is right there, and that is negative three, zero. Y-intercept is right there, and that is zero, negative six. Right, notice those are points. Now we need to find the slope, right? There are a bunch of points. I'm gonna do it right there. We're going down two and over one. This is a slope of negative two, right? Because this, this right arrow is going down. This right arrow is going up. If you're having trouble, picture, right, you didn't have trouble when it was in the first quadrant, right? This one would look, it's not in the first quadrant, but right, it would be down if it was in the first quadrant. All right, so here, oh, this is interesting. Every intersection is good, all right? I think there's a bunch of these on the homework. And so the x-intercept and the y-intercept are the same point. Why are they the same point? Because it goes through zero, zero. I think there's several questions on homework where that's true. That makes your life easy. And then the slope here is down one over one, right? Down one over one. So slope is negative one over one, right? We're going down one. This is an arrow pointing down. And so the slope here is negative one. Good luck on the homework.